Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Enjoying this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway. The people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Hey guys, it's Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. It's WrestlingMayhemShow.com's Indie Mayhem Show. It's episode 71, uh, a little show where we like to get into indie wrestling. We have a little bit of our own ties into it. Myself doing production here with the International Wrestling Cartel, Renegade Wrestling Alliance, and so much more with uh, Sorgatron Media, PittsburghWrestling.com, and the upcoming relaunch of IndieWrestling.us. I hope to talk about that here in the next few weeks as that gets wrapped up. Uh, but also with me is my compatriot down in Corpus Christi, Texas. I keep forgetting he's in a different Texas. he's a different location for a little bit here. Uh, he is Eamon Payton. He is the commentator down there with Inspire Pro Wrestling. How are you doing this week, sir? I'm doing fantastic, Sorgatron. I am ready Talk about indie wrestling all the way here from Corpus Christi, Texas. Corpus Christi. You're not. You're not even saying it right. I used to call it Corpus Christi. That was a problem on the show for the longest time. It's not a. It's not a Meadville thing. But hey, it's close <laughs> enough. We don't get started with the Meadville. Anyways, uh, but this is the Indie Mayhem Show. You can check us out at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Subscribe to the Indie Mayhem Show itself on iTunes, uh, YouTube, Stitcher, Spreaker, and iHeartRadio, and anywhere else. Just search for it. You'll find it on your favorite uh, podcast aggregator. If you're missing, let us know. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com is the email. Let us know if we're missing someplace, and let us know what you want us to talk about. Have any questions, anything, any promotions we're missing out on in indie wrestling? And such a wide vast world out there anybody we should be talking to uh we like to get a great variety on the show and uh, we're going to have some very exciting uh guests on from the sounds of it these next few weeks and uh, today of course uh as well and uh and you can join us here live uh live.wrestlingmamshow.com at 11 p.m eastern time uh program note for the next two weeks we'll actually be having the show at 9 p.m eastern time and bumping up the wrestling mayhem show uh an hour later uh to accommodate some of our guests some special stuff we're going to be doing leading into iwc super indie look for announcements there uh on the twitters for wrestling mayhem show at mayhem show over there so uh, this week, like I said, we get we like to mix things up. We have people all around indie wrestling and influenced by wrestling. And uh, this week is uh, is another one of those kinds of lines. Uh, we have Frankie screams. And she's, you're involved in so much. Should I just let you explain all of it because because I just have this list of things that you're involved <laughs> in, and I'm not even sure. I am familiar with you because I, I I I follow and follow back or whatever the Strong Style brand on Instagram, for instance, but. It, and so that's kind of my introduction to what you're into. Uh, but, but can you explain, what do you do, sir? <laughs> <laughs> uh, pretty much I'm a vocalist for a metal hip-hop band called Scare Don't Fear. And I also recently started a clothing line called Strong Style Brand, which is geared and inspired by pro wrestling. So I do a little bit of everything over here. Mm-hmm. And I see you're, you're getting around a bit about with non-point. Jeez, I haven't seen that band uh, live for a while. I need to get back in the music circuit myself. So <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But, we just got back uh, from doing two months with non-point. Uh, it was a great time. It was one of our best tours that we ever did. We got to travel across the whole entire uh, entire United States. It's a good time. We, uh, we definitely helped make a bigger name for ourselves. And I was repping Strong Style Brand every night that I could. So mm-hmm. cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, how long you been at uh, the music game, the the clothing line uh, game for a while here, right? Uh, you said music game. Yeah, yeah. I, I've been involved in in music since basically I was thirteen years old when I got my first drum set. Mm-hmm. I uh, right away started playing in a local bands, just playing local clubs in Providence. And uh, as I got older, maybe like around sixteen, seventeen, I started taking it a lot more seriously and. Here I am today, you know, finally, uh, maybe two years ago, just got signed and started touring and awesome. finally getting to start living my dream a little bit. Oh, that's great. That's awesome. Uh, so, uh, you yeah, let's get into kind of the wrestling side. You said you're very influenced, of course, with Strong Style and everything like that. And one of the questions we like to ask for people getting into this, uh, you know, what is kind of your, where did your influence start with wrestling? Uh, what, what was kind of your first or early memory of, of oh, that's, that's something for me right there, pro wrestling? Uh, I'd have to say when I was like maybe three years old, my, my dad and my uncle were big wrestling fans. And I just remember seeing characters like ultimate warrior and macho man on TV. And I got captivated by it just like everybody else. You know, I, I seen it and the characters were just over the top and 
just took me in and I haven't stopped watching it since pretty much. Awesome. Awesome. And, and so th- is that, was that a natural fit for you? The, the, when you started getting into music and, and the clothing line, it was just like, I got to apply this wrestling. Yeah. Well, you know what it was for years. Uh, I, I was just like, you know, I, I, I love that I'm doing music. I love that I'm living my dream in this world, but I've always wanted to be involved in wrestling. Like I'm the type of person where I can't just like something. I have to be a part of it as well. Mm-hmm. So this, this, the same with wrestling. I just I needed to find something that I can do, a, a place for me. And I knew it wasn't going to be wrestling. I definitely don't have the body to be a wrestler. <laughs> but um, I, I, I really enjoy the, uh, the aspects of, you know, all the behind-the-scenes stuff and mm-hmm. things like that. And, you know, I've had, that, I've had that thought that many people have. Oh, should I start a federation or should I start a company? And, and you know, you realize that that's not easy to do. And if you want to do it the right way, it takes a lot of time, a lot of effort. So it basically came down to, hey, Let's start a clothing line. Let's, you know, build from there and see how it goes. So that's where Strong Style brand pretty much came from. Mm-hmm. I'm noticing in the picture we snagged uh, of you for the video here off of uh, your Twitter, and I'm really digging this uh, this uh, luchador design uh, that's going on here. Can you talk to us a little bit about the origin of this? Yeah, yeah, I would love to, actually. That was um, pretty much after we came up with the logo and we showed uh you know, the public, what our logo looked like. People really, really loved it. They loved the barbed wire. So I didn't expect that. I wasn't, I wasn't sure if people were going to like that or not, but they did. So I said, let's do something else just a little bit more hardcore, maybe incorporate some other styles of wrestling in there. And uh, I just had this vision of a hardcore luchador. And I, I, uh, I hit up a graphic designer. And I asked him if he can, you know, illustrate it for me, see how it looks, kind of bring it to life a little bit for me. And he did just that. His name's D.N. Easton, I believe. He's a, he's a beast. He does a lot of stuff for some other indie wrestlers as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, he came, he came up with the basic uh, illustration for it, and then I had our in-house graphic designer kind of shade it up, bring it to life a little bit, and, um, you know, the rest is history. We just threw it online, and a lot of people loved it. It's been our number one selling shirt that we have right now, so it's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. We... Uh, we actually had him created on WWE 2000 uh, 2K or whatever the new one is. Mm. So you can you can download that guy if you want. That's on the shirt <laughs> to play yeah, as him. Oh, that's awesome! So he's he's actually a character, a, a, a creator wrestler. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Do they have much barbed wire in that game anymore? I don't have the most recent one. So. <laughs> no, they don't. They don't have any barbed wire in it. <laughs> I think I, I still have the one that featured ECW that one year. Um, but, oh, yep. Yeah, but anyways, um, yeah, a really cool design. So, what's your uh, what, what's kind of been the reaction from uh, the the indie wrestling, the pro wrestling industry in general? It's been great. It's been it's you know it's been better than I expected because here I am, you know, not really having a background in in pro wrestling besides like the small stuff I did for some local companies. So I was really surprised to see that wrestlers from all over the world were responding in a positive way. They were telling me they loved the ideas and they wanted to help, you know, spread the word and be a part of it. Uh, It really was motivating and it made me take it even more serious than I already was. So Mm -hmm. it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Do you get with touring and everything? Do you get a lot of opportunities to, to get out and check out the indies? You know, I was really hoping that that would be the case. I really was. But as of now, the schedules that we get, it doesn't ever work out. Um, mm-hmm. I always miss shows by like a day or two days. It, it sucks, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, because I, we, I listen to another podcast, a lot of guys here, and, and, and they're the comedians touring around. But it, it looks like they do the Saturday night shows and usually can catch Sunday shows wherever they end up. But uh, it, it, yeah, it, it, yeah, even locally, there's so many shows and you're always busy, right? I, I couldn't even imagine on tour. Yeah, when when we're on tour, we pretty much have a show every single night, mm. and especially on the weekends when all the good indie shows are happening as well on the weekends, so that's usually why it never works out. When we do have an off day, it'll be like a Monday night, so there's not really anything going on. We'll be tired as shit, so we'll just want to stay home and, or stay in the van or a hotel, <laughs> wherever we are, and just rest. So how do, how do you keep up on uh, your wrestling on, on, on a tour like this? The internet. The internet is a beautiful thing. <laughs> That's about <laughs> all I use my data for on my phone is for catching up with wrestling. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, there's a couple of websites that I go to to read updates on you know what's going on on the indies. There's a couple of websites that I watch, uh, like the main stuff, like WWE and Lucha Underground. Mm-hmm. There's, some, uh, there's some secret websites out there. I'll just leave it at that. 
<laughs> I think I think some people around here might be aware of those. Um, <laughs> some people, well, you, you get around, you get, you get, you find stuff any way you can. Especially with the indies, it's, it's tough because uh, you know maybe you don't have access to to some stuff out there. But uh, uh, so, what are you watching? I noticed you, you know, I saw some stuff on your Instagram, uh, some promotions. Um, you know, as far as indies go, what what really kind of has your attention these days? These days, what has my attention? is uh czw i really love czw Mm -hmm. combat zone is uh for for me that's like a little bit of everything and that's exactly what i like they have the hardcore stuff they got the technical stuff they got the tag team stuff going on um they even got an awesome woman division too now so it's i I really like what combat's doing uh chikara is the first indie company that i ever got into up until i discovered chikara i was only watching WWE and TNA for years, and then I finally discovered Jakar, and it just opened up my my world to this whole new this whole new uh, wrestling industry. But um, other than those two, I really like PWG as well, Evolve, Dragon Gate. Um, I actually a, a funny company that I feel like not that many people talk about, but they should be because it's just pretty awesome what they do is a uh, Hood Slam. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Have you guys talked about Hood Slam at all on the show? Yeah, Eamon has brought Hood Slam to my attention. I don't know, Eamon, if you can speak <laughs> to that a little more than I can here. No, definitely. Uh, it, it just seems like, a, I mean, in indie wrestling especially, you get a lot of those cutting-edge kind of promotions that are just doing something different, and, and I think they're kind of they're kind of one of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, to, to, point, I, to, to point out how, how unique they are, their website is birdswillfall.com. <laughs> yeah. and i never understood that <laughs> <laughs> there has to be something to it and the first image you see actually has nothing to do with wrestling at all it seems i, I think he's smoking a <laughs> pipe of, of an interesting uh make there but you go you get in and it is it is wrestling uh yeah and it's uh I, I love these these pro wrestling as a drama as something different than pro wrestling kind of ideas like this. And it, it seems like there's a lot of really inventive things going on out there, right? Yeah, there are. And I can relate to it because the band that I started is a metal hip hop band. Like who would ever think that metal and hip hop could work together, you know, on the same side of, uh, of things. And now you look at hood slam and they're doing things from left field too. You know, they're taking mm-hmm. Winnie the Pooh characters and making them druggies and you know they're fighting uh, mortal combat guys and stuff you know it's just it's insane that's, that's incredible why are you watching any uh lucha underground oh man i'm i'm really disappointed right now that's the one show that i haven't watched since i've been on tour so for like the past two months i'm totally behind i did it on purpose i'm like you know let me wait till i go home and i'm gonna binge watch lucha underground and it's gonna be like the best like 18 hours of my life so uh, <laughs> that's my favorite that's my favorite uh company to watch right now is, is lucha underground what they're doing is awesome amazing amazing uh so uh so going out this you know could you, could you see have you had any opportunities to maybe do themes for uh wrestlers or anything like that uh, yeah, we're we're actually working on something right now. Scare don't fear the band. We're working with CZW to come up with a couple of themes for them. Nice. So um, we're working on a theme song for a wrestler, and we're also going to be working on a theme song for one of their special events that they're doing. Awesome. 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 Yeah. So you'll be. I'm excited about that. So you'll be like like what we see on WWE, like the the, the featured artist on on some of their uh, major shows here. Yeah, yeah, and uh, also like on the IP per views that they that they put out, nice. they play music in between. We're working on getting our music on that as well. Awesome, awesome. But uh, yeah, CZW has been awesome to us. They they really like t- took notice that a lot of our band members watch CZW and promote CZW all the time. So they've been really nice to us, really cool. Um, and we're we're glad to be cross promoting with them. Like who better to cross promote with you know for a metal hip hop band than CZW? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so I know you guys are strong, strong on social media here. Um, any surprises as you're touring, you know, connections like CZW, anything else, uh, uh kind of pop up out of the woodwork, uh, thanks to that. Oh, uh, you're saying from our social media? Yeah. Yeah. Um, not too many. We've, uh, Lupe Fiasco, he's, he's hit us up a couple of times on Twitter, just tweeting at us to say he likes our music. Mm-hmm. Um, but we haven't really made any like major big connections or friends with anybody through our social media. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, so 
we usually we usually end on a very interesting question that I think I'll adapt here. Usually we ask what's the best and worst thing about uh, indie wrestling, or, you know, being in indie wrestling, participating in it. Uh, so yeah. I guess we can adapt. I really I really wish I had this question back when I did a regular uh, music interview show. Now, uh, yeah. But, uh, what's the best and worst thing about uh, uh, about being in a band touring live right now? It's kind of like indie wrestling. You're traveling. You're yeah. on the road. Uh, there, there, yeah. there's, there's there's shitty food. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's definitely one of them. Yep, yep. But uh, but you, you got one. You got a good, good and worse than that. And if there's anything that that crosses over to uh, your experiences with uh, you know friends in wrestling or anything, please contribute. Yeah, I would say the worst thing possibly that I can think of of being a traveling musician or or pro wrestler is um is not being able to sleep in your bed every single night. That's pretty bad, especially when you've been gone for you know months at a time. You really start to miss getting a full night's rest so i know i know that can be tough uh the traveling schedule can be real rough um but some of the better things that uh you can get out of that you can get out of uh, pro wrestling or traveling in a banner i think is just connecting with people all over the world and being able to see the whole world like i i i, I was stuck in providence Rhode island for like 22 years and when i finally got to tour and see what my country looked like i was like wow like I have not, I haven't realized how awesome of a country I actually have. You know what I mean? You see movies mm-hmm. and you see things on TV, but it's way better to go see things in real life, you know? Mm-hmm. Certainly. But, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So, what do you got going on uh, coming up here? Well, of course, if anybody's, are you, are you open to working with more wrestlers and such and promotions? I know there's a few promotions and wrestlers do listen to this show. If they're digging your music over there at uh, uh, scareddon'tfear.net, uh, can, they, can they reach out to you for that, something like that? Yeah, yeah. We love working with other wrestlers. I mean, we have a contact page on the website. Mm-hmm. You can hit that up and We'd be glad to talk to you if you want to collab on a theme or you just want to maybe collab on something else. Definitely hit us up. And uh, other wrestling companies, too. We'd definitely like to work with other wrestling companies. Uh, we got some friends from Providence, Rhode Island, called XWA. We work with them a lot, so we're always open-minded to that. Yeah, I saw a little bit of XWA, I believe, on your Instagram, right? Yeah, yep. I've been, uh, I've been working with those guys like maybe since I was like 15 years old. They've been around for a while, mm-hmm. so... Uh, Phoenix is the guy that runs that place. He's been real good to me. He's given me plenty of options and opportunities to see what I like to do in the wrestling world. So shout out to him and shout out to that whole company. Wow, it looks pretty good. I'm pulling up the Facebook here. Now it looks like it looks like uh, Tomosa Champa has been a part of it. Uh, Ring of Honor, of course, you know, popular guy. Uh, they got a really yep. cool look to the graphics and everything. Oh, Samoa Joe coming up on the 30th. Yeah. I'm mad, man. It's the day I'm leaving to go back on the road. I'm home for a week, and I'm leaving the day Samoa Joe comes. Oh, taking on Chris <laughs> Dickinson. That's going to be brutal. Yep, they're doing uh, like a best out of three series in New England that weekend. Oh, jeez. Uh, definitely yeah. want to check out. Maybe we'll uh, keep that one on the radar. I'm going to like it right now, so I can keep an eye on it, too. Uh, so up there definitely. in Rhode Island. A lot of wrestling in Rhode Island? Uh, there's, there's a decent amount. I, I say XWA and Beyond Wrestling. And uh, also RWA are the biggest companies that we have out here. <laughs> then there's a couple of smaller ones, but those are the three that, you know, everyone's paying attention to. And they're the, they're the ones that are filling up the gyms and the halls and all mm-hmm. the arenas. Mm-hmm. It, it's funny because we actually have an RWA. I work with an RWA here. And, a, and it, <laughs> it keeps popping up. And I have to, we kind of have a little bit of a Google battle <laughs> with them. <laughs> I don't know how. The, <laughs> the, I don't even know if they so, stand for the same thing. So. <laughs> So it's a different Renegade Wrestling Alliance. I th- oh yes, it is actually. So. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Um, there's also there was also some sort of fantasy league I would find back in the day when they first started <laughs> up. That was a Renegade Wrestling Alliance. So, um, anyways, uh, branding. Got to check those Googles before you register that domain, right? Uh, yep, but, you're right. And I, I'm not even sure which one came first at this point, honestly. So, <laughs> uh, but all right, check them out. Uh, where's all the places people can find you online? You can check us out at you can check the bando at scareddon'tfear.net and you can check the Cold and Lino at strongstylebrand.com. And there's contact uh, pages on both of those websites if you want to hit us up, have any questions, we'll be glad to answer you back. Awesome. Go check it out. Really cool clothes, really cool music. Coming from Frankie Screams here on the Indie Mayhem show. Thanks for joining us. No problem, man. Let's come back anytime.
That's right, Sorg. Uh, time to get into some of uh, the uh, the the meat and, meat and veg of, of of the independent wrestling world uh, this oh, weekend. Uh, we'll talk about some uh, grown. upcoming events and and some of the stuff upcoming for uh, indie wrestling. Uh, I did want to bring up a point because I uh, for those that do follow me on Twitter, um, uh, you know that I uh, I uh, pestered Sorg a bit and I found and I made him find find uh, a blog post that he made that I constantly think to. Every time I see uh, terrible social media in professional Oof. wrestling, Oof. Uh, and and yeah, <laughs> um, but this was a post that Sword made. Uh, we we found out like over three years ago, but it still really does hold up about social media, uh, particularly Facebook and uh, and uh, professional wrestlers, uh, and what they should and shouldn't do, and and how to build a brand. You know, we were saying build a brand, or Sword was saying build a brand before anyone wwe was um uh, to be fair yeah. i think i was saying it around the same time wwe was figuring it out so possibly yeah that's true i was not i, I was not inventing anything when the, when this happened and this is a message that i heard for years so mm-hmm. anyways if anybody knows brand building it's freaking wwe oh yeah yeah definitely um speaking of wwe uh i don't know i just spurred i i i get it more often like than not i i told sorg every like couple maybe maybe like once a week like i'll have an inkling and I'll, I'll see something and i'll go god i wish i would just share sorg's post and just like like i want it to be like a, a like like a meme that i just post anytime i see terrible shit on social media <laughs> when it comes to wrestling um you need a graphic uh, that says hey you they're on social media you're an idiot read this you know, maybe I mean that's yeah. a little strong, I know, but but you need something like that, right? I mean, no, definitely not to put over my post, but I mean, just generally, I have <laughs> I have several that I would point people to, you know, and I right. I forget that I wrote this thing over here. No, definitely. Uh, but uh, here, one of the ones that spurred it uh, from uh, this past week was uh, from a company called uh, Squared Circle Wrestling, uh, otherwise known as Two CW Wrestling. Many may know uh, if you watch the wrestling mayhem shows from maybe like a year, year and a half ago, maybe more than that. Uh, I, I actually watched one of the Two CW I pay per views and 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 didn't say fun things about it, uh, production wise. But uh, that's another story. Um, but uh, Obviously, this past week, we also had the NXT TakeOver event mm-hmm. uh, with some big things involving a lot of stars that came from the independent wrestling world, uh, you know, and one that just debuted that's also working the independents now, uh, possibly some Owen. Uh, and and uh, two CW... Purely, purely uh, speculation. Purely speculation. Purely speculation. Um, but there's... Uh, uh, two CW is a company that's very vocal... Uh, vocally anti WWE, mm. uh, which which some companies are, and I never understand it personally. But I mean, that's a personal thing. Uh, they 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 sell T shirts that say uh, F the E in the uh, scratch WWF logo stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, the, uh, whoever was running the two CW Twitter account uh, tweeted at Triple H, and they also put the dot before to make sure everyone saw it. Um, so they know their social media. Hey, uh, sweet job hiring indie dudes, making an indie show all on big corporate WWE money, acting like you built something. Please, if you didn't have the cash and platform and had to start from scratch, you'd have zip. Easy to make stars out of people who were ready. Why don't you make one guy hired who couldn't make an NFL a star? Hashtag facts or facts. Um, So, yeah, I I don't. uh, That's an example. Ladies and gentlemen, of how not to handle uh, social media uh, as a wrestling company. Um, I don't know. I, I I've gotten very vocal about this, and 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 I'm very concerned about this all because of the fact that uh, for those that do not know, I actually run a social media for an independent wrestling company. So you're kind of hyper aware uh, of the situation. Yeah. Um, it, it is frustrating. It is extremely, extremely frustrating. Um, and, and, you know, because it's beyond just making yourself a brand, you know, you're, you're a company, like, like if a company, if a major corporation did this, like that's the backlash and PR nightmare. And, and for someone who's majoring in, in public relations, that nightmare would be, uh, insane. The, the amount that you would have to do to recover from that, um, it's it's so frustrating because 
we talk about indie wrestling and then, and obviously with the term indie, a lot of people consider it to be very low brow or low level or, or not as professional, you know, you don't call it professional wrestling, you know? Um, mm. but it doesn't have to be, <laughs> it really doesn't have to be. Um, I, 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 my point was just to sort of talk about just social media and, and the importance of it. And I, and I even from just a company standpoint, from a wrestler standpoint as well, uh, obviously Sorg's uh, post, uh, his blog post was more about like wrestlers in particular and, and, and their, their personas that they give on Facebook or Twitter mm-hmm. or stuff like that. Um, yeah, I just, I, I find it to be a really big problem. <laughs> uh, yeah. And, 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 and it does so still apply. It still applies, you know, you know, the, the post talks about you, a wrestler as your personal brand, right? Yeah. And, you know, you know, we talk just to talk to Frankie there, and he's 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 on there. He's being himself. He's plugging in the stuff that he's doing, and and that's his brand. They're doing a very very good job at that with Strong Style and and, and his band, right? Uh, yeah, it's all about that if you're if you're a band, and 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 that that's your brand is that band, and and your your clothing line and stuff. Um, and, and, and yeah, promotion has to think about that, too. I've actually been having uh, really good discussions recently with with some companies and, and saying you need to consider this. You need to g- think about where your people can go and congregate and talk about you. You know, mm-hmm. uh, where where do, are you, your fans need a place to engage and in some in some places that's gone away. Right. Because of whatever reason uh, you need to get you need to be here. You need to retweet. You need to respond to people uh, and 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 not be a dick. <laughs> you're representing yeah. a company, even if you're like the and, and, and I get it. You know, uh, I, I, I I help with a couple of promotions uh, on their social media and there's multiple people on there. And we talk about, you know, with, with the Wrestling Mayhem show, most of people have, have access to this account. That's why you may notice certain nights the live tweets have a different flavor that I even disagree with. And you'll find me arguing with the Mayhem show account, which yeah. is confusing, I'm sure, to some people that think maybe <laughs> I run everything around here. Um, but, uh, and even I'll even engage with, you know, I do have access to the IWC Wrestling account. And sometimes I'll poke at them a little bit. But I'm doing it as me, or I'm doing it as the Mayhem Show, and I'm trying to start or continue or instigate a dialogue, for instance. Yeah. Right? Um, for my own outside of that agenda, you know, that I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to use IWC's account to push a, unless there's something connected that's mutually beneficial, I will not just blindly go on IWC's account and go hey guys go check out the wrestling mayhem show isn't it cool you know uh, it's a hey darren de Niro is going to be on here uh dalton castle is going to you know uh, we're going to talk about super Andy, like like stuff like we're going to do in the next couple weeks something that makes sense i'm not going to go into business for myself on their account unless yeah. i've had a discussion with mr justin Plummer and say hey can we promote ourselves more and i don't feel that's appropriate at this point right um because you know again we talk with other promotions i don't want to generally plug this thing and they're talking to rwa guys we're talking to inspire guys what does that matter to the iwc fans right and uh, yeah. uh it's not like we can pretend that there's these you know other promotions aren't out there but that still doesn't make sense to you know this is it this is this is brand you're going to confuse the brand uh if, if you do something like that you know because the discussion mostly should be on their platform about what they're doing and getting you to their next show or buying their dvd or digital download um yep. and you can do something like this and i understand you want to engage and what does that do now granted nobody from an indie promotion itself is going to be going and trying to get a job from NXT. So there's not really any bridges burnt there. There could be a, oh, you work with 2CW, F those guys, we're not giving you a tryout, or you're not going to get a tryout. If you're somebody who was like, oh, yeah, I trained up at 2CW, you know, and maybe the air does go around. Honestly, I don't think Triple H even looked at these tweets. I, I don't think he knows. I, I don't. I don't believe he looked at them. They honestly didn't get a lot of retweets. No, very much at all. no, we're giving. Um, we're here giving it more attention than it deserves and probably got in general. Most likely, uh, I do think that um, 
WWE does pay attention to things, mm -hmm. you know, I think they do pay attention to the indie wrestling world. I mean, not, not just with like who they bring up on NXT, but just like they, they're watching and they're seeing certain things. And like you mentioned, you know, people could hear that you came from 2CW and not get a tryout, you know, or, or something along those lines. Um, it, and, you know, it, it's, it's even, it's even more frustrating on just a personal wrestler level. Um, and it's, and it's so infuriating because you see somebody, my favorite, my least favorite thing is to see like a, uh, you know, open, open the, uh, what is it? Open the curtain sort of like inside thing of like, you know, uh, you know, that kind of thing on somebody's Facebook page where they're named what their ring name is. And, you know, it's all their wrestling stuff's on there and, and fans are their friends and, and, you know, that shouldn't be happening. And the worst part is you can't comment and say, Hey, you shouldn't be, you know, you know, leave this off of Facebook because that just continues the problem. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it's really, uh, it's really frustrating. I think a lot of people are like, I, I also see a lot of people that are like, well, you know, wrestling used to be, you know, very not secretive, but you know, not everyone knew everything that was happening. It's like, well, maybe you shouldn't post everything that you're thinking mm -hmm. on Facebook mm -hmm. when it shouldn't be out there. You know, I, I, it, it does frustrate me. There are a lot of wrestlers that do it well, I think. And there's a lot that just, a lot, some, some who are really good wrestlers who just don't get how to separate yourself as a, as a character and yourself as a person. Um, to be fair, this is not an easy concept for a lot to grasp. I'm not mm -hmm. sounds. I'm not calling somebody stupid that doesn't get this. No. I mean, there's a lot of people of, of certain ages. I was I was reading a really good article that was going around today, uh, or over the last few last week actually. Uh, DJ Lunchbox is the first one that showed me, but it came up also on awesome awesome cast today about you know uh, you know my generation, my time frame of generation. You know, people born in like the early '80s have seen this progress of technology, and if anybody understands and has paid attention to technology through that period, we get and we saw the evolution versus how many people are just dropped in. Uh, sorry, Eamon, somebody your age, full yeah. 10 plus years younger than me, you kind of arrived into a world where this happened. Uh, no, that's true. And, you know, and I I uh, have personal, not personal conflict, but ju just, you know, I get caught up sometimes and, and I, you know, I'll try, I'll tweet, I'll think of tweeting something and being like, oh, wait, should I really tweet that? Like, you know, because mm -hmm. does that kind of break what we're going for here, or, or whatever? Because you know, it, it 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 is hard. It is difficult, and and um, you know, there is some there is a, a learning curve, I guess, that goes with it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I do think there are a lot of people that I, I, there are a lot of people I've seen also that do it well and 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 understand it and get it, um, and those are always really good to see. And I feel like those people get success and, and, and opportunities for a very good reason. Um, and, and yeah, it, it, it's not, it's, it's not impossible to learn. Uh, it's just something I wish some people would take in, into account a bit more because it's not really a focus. I think to a lot, a lot of people, mm -hmm. I think in a lot of these cases, perception is reality. And if, uh, you know, you're putting on the perception, maybe you're like, oh, I'm just being a dick because it's my character on there. You know, I got to think, how, what is that translating over? You know, yeah. uh, how many uh, is the fans, is the smarts, whatever. But how many are saying, oh, Triple H buries people. But Triple H does this because they, I think they're transposing that character on television. And versus the indies, you know, if you had a dick experience with Cole Cabana one time, maybe he was, one, maybe he had a bad day. One, maybe he was just being kind of Cole Cabana and you took it the wrong way. Maybe you were kind of being an asshole fan, you know, but that's a perception. Cole Cabana's a dick. Any of you those situations. A, we talk about this, I think it goes back to what we kind of talked last week with the Young Bucks uh, Rolling Stone interview about uh, about marketing yourself. Exactly. Uh, uh, you know, I one another pet peeve of mine is seeing people who have their wrestler persona as their Facebook or Twitter or whatever, and they have a lot of fans that are mm -hmm. followers or friends of them, and they'll tweet about how much they hate, you know, smarks and and you know tweet that kind of sort of tweet where it's like, you know, you couldn't lace my boots or mm -hmm. or, or whatever, you know, mom's basement 
insert comment. I've had yeah. and I've had discussions with people who are like some of these fans are freaking weird, man. Like I've, and I've, some I, wrestling fans are. We've that had that conversation. It is. I, I feel so bad for the girls on the indies. Seriously. Oh, uh, I I like I, they have to run into the weirdest people, and even some of the guys we know that we've talked with. We've had some mentions here on the show about it, allusions to it. But I've I've talked to a few people in person, like like, like before and after between shows, and they're like that, that, that dude, that dude. I'm get, I get the weirdest messages on Facebook from that guy. But you don't go on blasting that guy because one, you don't know how that guy's going to react or girl or whatever it is, yeah. you know. And 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 what like it or not, as long as they're not crossing a line. You know, a specific line, you know, those that's somebody who would pay that, for yeah, your t-shirt it's it's that for... guy, it's the person that's buying your t-shirt at every show, buying whatever you're doing, buying the ticket to come see you, DVDs, etc. You know, I, I don't know what expectations are of 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 your fans in any medium you know whether it be a podcast whether it be a wrestler whether it be a band right i mean yeah. it's it's do you have this idealized sense of this uh i don't know this proper gentleman with a pipe watching inspire pro wrestling <laughs> i mean is that what we're expecting here you're like oh pro wrestling fans. i hope so because that would be amazing <laughs> but... i mean i just want the gentleman to be our our main fan and that and and you just have many gentlemen that are watching our program as well and having high level conversations uh, you know on on, on and, rest- and it's Go ahead. Uh, uh, sorry i was just gonna say it, it's perfectly fine to believe that that's what you think of wrestling fans or whatever but to vocalize it is another thing right right you know, I've heard, I, like you mentioned, like women in wrestling, like I've heard stories of things and I am just mortified. And I'm not going to share them, obviously, but no. um, the, I, but the mentality is, well, if they aren't crossing enough of a line to where I feel in danger at all, then OK, like whatever. You know what I mean? Like that's because they understand like i'm sorry like it makes them money like if you if, if you don't you know you know there are going to be people that are buying their t-shirts or whatever there are going to be people that are going to buy you know custom matches and stuff like that you know it's it's a thing and they make money off of it so hey you know make your money where you can but right um but no it you just have to i i don't get how people can like post about like snarks or or you know people mm-hmm. who you know, or, or the IWC or whatever, mm-hmm. not the International Wrestling Cartel. Um, I'm so glad we're at a point where we we, we, we clarify that every time. Yes. Uh, I don't know how they can say that and then immediately expect them to get, you know, fans being like, yeah, go you. Like, I don't understand that at mm-hmm. all. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Well, maybe they're a heel and that's okay, for one thing. Maybe. But yeah. still. If you're a heel, you know, hey. Uh, but there's a whole other thing that, ju- that jumps around that. I mean, you know, again, on the fan side, like I, I've, you know, sometimes, you know, you know I, I forward you guys comments from YouTube. Right. A- and sometimes it's like, what is this guy writing? But you get something <laughs> out of it. Right. And, and my thing is always you respond to everybody because you never know, even though this person, I don't want to slam anybody, but, you know, sometimes you'll get a message that's just entirely unintelligible and not exactly even along the line of what the heck you're talking about. Uh, you know, I had a quite, I had a, I had a thing about uh, John Cena or something. This this one short video I did, and I had a question asking about Sting. When Sting gonna wrestle next? And it's like that. Well, okay, you know, <laughs> that's okay. You know, actually, because if that person thinks I'm some kind of wrestling expert farthest from cool. the truth of course I, i'm a commentator if anything officially uh you know that they want to ask that question even though it's a thread for a whole another video that's fine that's yeah. fine by me they're coming to me and i answered their question and they're following through and maybe they'll watch more videos you know uh you get a stupid question as maybe a wrestler as a promotion you know, you have to stomach it because that's the person that may be the one that buys a ticket to every one of your shows for the next year. Yeah. Or buys absolutely. every one of your DVDs in the back catalog. Or, in my case, listens back to the last 30 episodes of our show for some <laughs> reason of insanity. I have to I have to imagine. Uh, especially this show. Uh, but, no, actually the other show. But, anyways, uh, you get what I'm saying there. You know, I mean, you know, like that kind of thing. You don't know what you have there. 
And I'm a right. very one fan at a time kind of mentality on this. And I know that I'm sure there's reasons like, oh, you can't do that. You know, that doesn't scale. It is kind of thing. I'm mixing the wrestling conversations with the business uh, conversations. And there's things that I'm dealing with right now that are very much meshing the, by the way, this is a business mm-hmm. in my own dealings with wrestling. And I have to be reminded of that. It's fun, but it has to be treated as a job if you're going to be serious about it. As a wrestler, promoter, video, marketing, etc. It's a business. Yeah. Maybe your dream job, but it's a business. And people forget about that. And these kinds of conversations happen. And we may talk about your promotion in such a bad <laughs> light, uh, for instance. And we just shake our head and say, well, and now when that con- oh, yeah, I'm working 2CW this weekend. I'm like, whoa, how's that like? Sounds <laughs> like they're a bunch of dicks to me. But hey. It's all about perception. Yeah. All right. On that note, hey, I don't think we got, there's some promotions. We talked <laughs> about that XWF, I believe it was. Uh, XWA, yeah. Ah, damn it. I was just going with it and hoping I got the right letters. XWA up in <laughs> Rhode Island having Chris Dickinson and uh, Samoa Joe, uh, for instance. Yeah, there's a three. Uh, it's to Friday, Saturday, Sunday, they're having three matches of Samoa Joe versus Chris, Chris Dickinson. Uh, one's at XWA. I forgot what the second one is, uh, but I know the final one is at Beyond Wrestling. Uh, Beyond Wrestling having a show in Providence, Rhode Island on Sunday. Uh, not only can you see Samoa Joe versus Chris Dickinson, but you can see a War Games match. Ooh. Which, hey, you know that's that's always fun. Oh, there was something. And there was something. Somebody, uh, Zach Allen tweeted a Instagram. There tweeted a picture of a double ring setup that was happening at some promotion he was at. I want to find out what the heck was going to happen there. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, definitely. Uh, but you know, uh, Beyond Wrestling always does some really cool stuff, uh, and and their stuff at Fet Music in Providence is really, really spectacular. So uh, I would encourage you to definitely go check them out. Uh, more information at lookmanofans.com dot uh, com, and and uh, Beyond Wrestling on every social media. So yeah. Go support them. Uh, if you're not in Providence, Rhode Island, though, and you're in the state of Texas, uh, there's an event happening on that very day. Uh, it may be uh, a company that I work for. It may be Inspire Pro Wrestling. Uh, uh, we, we mentioned it on the Indie Mayhem show before uh, on, on many other shows that I'm a part of. Uh, obviously, the Elimination Chamber is this Sunday as well. Um, I, I am convinced that, that every fiber of of the world right now does not want this event to happen but you know what it's, we we you know it's happening it's it's still happening uh, obviously uh for those that don't know the uh gosh darn the, it this is gonna happen yeah it, it one way or the other um the uh the uh flooding that's been happening all throughout texas and, oh, and especially uh, in houston in particular obviously uh really really uh devastating stuff uh uh obviously you know, i'm checking the weather every 30 minutes uh, to see, you know, what, what may happen. But uh, so, you know, we're not, we're still going on. We're still doing it. Uh, uh, I'm, I, I, you know, obviously follow us if there's going to be any updates, but I, I, I feel like this event will still happen. Uh, and it will be uh, May 31st at the Marquesa Hall and Theater in Austin, Texas. It's our In Their Blood 2 event. Uh, we got a double lane event of ACH and Dirty Andy Dalton for the Inspire Pro Championship. We are crowning our first ever XX Division champion in a three-way match with Athena, Jessica James, and Delilah Doom. Uh, there's there's tons of really good stuff on this show, and it's one of our bigger events. Uh, so uh, we encourage you to check it out uh, May 31st, uh, which is this Sunday uh, in Austin, Texas. Uh, it'll be a fun time. Uh, it, it'll be a very stressful time, I also assume, but it'll be a fun time. Um but hey, that's that's wrestling for you, um, and yeah, uh, that that'll be happening this weekend. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of other wrestling that's happening. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, oh, and uh, 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 obviously, Super Indies coming up. Uh, uh, sort of curious and excited to know that uh, uh, this past weekend was a Pro Wrestling Gorilla's a DDT Four mm-hmm. uh, Tag Team Tournament for the Tag Team Championships and. Uh, uh, in the end of it, the new tag team, uh, PWG tag team champions are uh, Andrew Everett and Trevor Lee, who will be at Super Indy nice. uh, uh, next month. So uh, cool stuff happening there. Uh, the, time, the tag titles actually changed hands three times uh, mm-hmm. in one night uh, throughout the, as the belts were defended uh, throughout the tournament. Uh, but yeah, 
cool stuff going on with PWG. Uh, their stuff should be coming out. Mm-hmm. The DVD of that event should be coming out very soon. So kind of, they, they're always doing Invade stuff. And kind of the word on that also, uh, we are going to be doing some special episodes here coming up. Again, we're going to be moving up to 9 p.m. Eastern time here for recording this. I believe Justin Plummer will be joining us in studio both shows the next two weeks. And there are going to be some super indie specials. Not, not so much discussion, kind of more interviews. Uh, coming up here and i do have a tentative list of who we're going to be talking to does not finalize we're still kind of working out uh some some specific details uh but we have of course ray Rowe. he's been on the wrestling man show in the past i have a confirmation from him uh he'll be joining us here i think in two weeks by pro wrestling uh competitor as well as well yes yeah exactly and they, an interesting crossover there uh we have on the list uh we should be having we're scheduled to have cedric alexander also from ring of honor very excited about that. Uh, Sugar Dunkington will be uh, joining us. Junkerton, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you have I'll, to get that right back. I'll, 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 I'll get that happen. by the time we get him on. I'll be practicing in the mirror all week. Um, and also, I believe we're having both Dylan Bostic and Ray Lynn on very nice. as well. So a very cool uh, that hook. Thanks, Justin Plummer, for uh, helping us uh, line a lot of that up. And we're going to talk to you with all, by the way, I think all of them. I think every one of them is in Super Indy. Yes. Uh, I I wasn't sure about Dylan. But yeah, every one of them. So of the current 10 competitors in Super Indy, uh, we will be talking to four of them over the next two weeks. And we have uh, in the past, of course, talked on this show with uh, Andrew Palace. In the recent, in la, over the last year, I believe before he won the Super Indy title, and uh, we have uh, way old interviews with Super Hentai on the Wrestling Mayhem Show dot com. So, uh, very and cool. a recent interview from a couple of weeks ago with uh, Darren De Niro, who won the uh, the uh, uh, fan voting right. on ABC Wrestling dot com Mayhem Bump. Uh, there, yeah, he was not initially on the list for fan voting until the. Mayhem show account and him kind of shamed them into it. Uh, <laughs> and there he won. So there so you go. So it was go. a more active Mayhem bump. Mayhem bump. We enacted change, ladies and gentlemen. That's the Mayhem Nation in action. At least Pittsburgh residents and friends of Darren De Niro. Uh, hey, tough enough guy, you know. Uh, yeah. Also, this week on PWXTV.com, they're going to have a show on uh, Saturday night over there in McKeesport. A lot of friends of the show. Part of that is their Berg Brawl, which I believe is a 30 man over the top rope battle royal. Um, friends of the show there's actually if you go they have the Steel City TV on their website including uh, friends of the show G Raver versus Chris LaRusso LaRusso joined nice. us most recently uh, in the past month here in the studio as well uh, mostly talking VOW but still and uh, so go check that out on WrestlingMayhemShow.com and we have an old old interview with him as well from way back in the day like 2007 it might be uh, when we first ran into him uh, and uh, PWX, pwxtv.com. Is that all the wrestling? I'm about running out of voice here. I think that's all the wrestling. <laughs> we're, we're wrestling plum tuckered. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Check out everything at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Uh, thank you to our guest this week. Again, check out the Strong Style brand and uh, and his band and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we'll, have, we'll have links over there on the website uh, for in the description if you're listening watching this wherever that might be facebook uh youtube uh, uh itunes stitcher spreaker iheart radio for instance and so much more follow us on the social medias at mayhem show wrestling mayhem show on the facebook and google plus thanks to our friend basic sickness at basic sickness.com aim is at aim and please check out inspire pro wrestling check out our friends here of the iwc the rwa the pittsburgh one and all of our friends at pittsburgh wrestling.com to check out releases from those including our documentaries finding zach gowan uh montreal theory and uh aj styles the missing matches with some exclusive interviews there so somebody take advantage of that memorial day sale for that one so thank you everybody checking everything out uh please support your local or otherwise independent professional professional wrestling promotion Never said I was a gangster or a thug, but I'm an animal. Beat up for the taste of the poor. Oh, sick, sick, sick. You know how I act now. If you got a problem, come and see if I'm a back down. Wow. Joe is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Do you like professional wrestling? Want your discussions? No holds barred. 
Check out WrestlingMayhemShow.com for all the wrestling podcast flavor you can handle.